Hey everyone, the name is Ossie Flowell. The Portal series is the first person puzzle game that involves you utilizing portals to solve test chambers. Everyone knows this. Alongside its wide variety of puzzle mechanics, one of Portal's most classic puzzle mechanics is the act of utilizing gravity itself, creating maneuvers related to conservation of momentum through portals, where you can drop through a portal and come spinning out the other end at the scene speed to launch yourself through the air, creating what is known as the iconic flinging. This implementation of physics in this manner is thanks to the Source Engine's iconic physics engine based off of Havoc's IP on virtual physics, which evolved into the V physics engine once implemented in Source. This physics engine is responsible for the funny ragdolls that Source is all well known for, and on topic for this video, Portals Physics. To get some technical stuff out of the way, the Portals in the Portal franchise interact uniquely with V Physics, as it presents a lot of technical challenges. The developer commentary in game explains a lot if you're interested in learning the nitty gritty of how it was like for the Portal team to get V Physics interacting with Portals nicely. The general programming behind Portal was basically entirely changed for the sequel when it was reprogrammed to be better optimized and more stable, allowing for moving portals and letting lower end hardware like Xbox 360 be capable of rendering up to 16 portals at once, a feat achieved by playing the cooperative campaign in split screen and having all four portals visible with level recursion through them. So now that we have that cleared up everyone now on the same page, this is where the story really starts. On the 22nd of June 2011, during a talk about how education and video games could work in tandem, Gabe Newell popped up at the Games for Change Festival of 2011 to announce that Portal 2 would be coming to classrooms, for free, and that Valve was actively working on creating a curriculum that would be based around utilizing Portal 2. This certainly raised a few eyebrows as people were intrigued by what this could lead to, and a year later at Games for Change Festival 2012, Valve finally showed what they were working on, Steam for Schools. Valve had been working with people in the educational sector to design a whole curriculum based around Portal 2 and its application in Classroom, and the end result of it came Steam for Schools, being a stripped down version of Steam intended to be used in schooling environments, and Portal 2 educational version, a specialized version of Portal 2 that would be updated and maintained for use in the classroom. Portal 2 had entered schools through Valve's Teacher to Portals program, a program designed to help schools and teachers utilize Portal 2 in the classroom by giving access to Steam for schools and providing lesson plans to be used, all mostly focused on the subject of physics and maths. Oh, and a single English lesson plan, I guess. These lesson plans are pretty interesting to read through, worksheets and all are provided. I love how these are all branded with the average science logo at the bottom. It brings me a big dumb smile on my face because trying to imagine myself as a student getting to do these was almost certainly resulting in student me hyperventilating in the middle of class. Hyperfixation do that to you. So, how was Portal 2 actually used in the classroom? Well, if I was making this video a week or so ago, I wouldn't have any way to open the educational version, since the only download that exists of it is a genuine copy that's locked behind the scene for school accounts. But thanks to the efforts of Retro Cat and Christ Snatcher, Portal 2's educational version cracked open for the first time ever and is now playable. Now to preface, I won't be providing download to the educational version crack. It's literally a free version of Portal 2 that works without Steam, and I'm not here to promote piracy on this channel, because that can get me into trouble. Go buy Portal 2, you twerp. It's as low as $2 on Steam sales, and one of the best video games ever made. You will not regret it. Anyways, let's discuss the actual content of the educational version. We'll be using its latest version before Valve stops supporting it silently. Already on the main menu, you can see some clear differences. The buttons for the cooperative campaign, extras menu, and robot enrichment have all been removed leaving only the single player command, puzzle maker, options, and exit button. Despite the removed options, these things still have full functionality. Co-op is still playable if you load directly into it, and the Super 8 teaser of the extras menu remains intact. When it comes to the single player campaign, everything is basically the same as the original game. The English lesson plan actually requires the single player campaign to be played in order to analyze the story, which makes sense why it's still intact. The real intrigue for the educational version, however, is the Puzzle Maker. This Puzzle Maker is absolutely fascinating due to the fact it's a unique version made specifically for the Teacher Portals program. This Puzzle Maker contains three new items, the Contraption Cube, Contraption Button, and a Text Bubble. The Contraption Cube is an entirely new cube made specifically for the education version, unique for having three new options. You can change the weight on the cube on a scale from 1kg to 80kg, change friction between five different presets, and it changes the elasticity between five different presets. Depending on the weight you set the cube to, the weight ball inside the contraption cube will actually change size to accommodate it. A cube of 1kg features a tiny weight ball inside it, while a max one of 85kg will have its entire interior encompassed by the weight ball. This is actually done dynamically via a flex group similar to how facial animations are done in the Source Engine, which is really cool. Changing the weight of the cube will make it react differently in response to gravity. Lighter cubes fall slower, and heavier cubes drop faster through the air. The speed at which they drop seems to decrease exponentially as they get heavier. Here's a quick test demonstrating this behavior. The 
Contraption cube by default is frictionless, meaning that it will experience zero drag on any surface it slides along and it slides endlessly as if it's on ice. As expected, upping the friction on the cube will make it less slidey. The levels of friction addition get, are indicated by these pads that get added onto the cube's white exterior. They build up with each friction preset until the final one where the pads entirely cover the white parts. Here's a quick demonstration. The elasticity of the contraption cube controls how bouncy the cube is. This is indicated by how much the cube is in jiggle when held or moved on how separated the white exterior parts become from the cube. Here I perform a drop test on a scale from very bouncy to no rebound so you can tell the difference. Now obviously you can mix and match the settings to your heart's desire. In total, I believe there's approximately 2100 unique contraption cube settings that exist with the customizability of it, making it Portal 2's most diverse official test element. Congratulations to the contraption cube. The contraption cube also has its own accompanying button, being the contraption button, which unfortunately is unfinished and broken as it renders completely black. Here's a restoration of what the contraption button is actually meant to look like. This button is entirely non-functional reviews, and due to us not knowing what's going on internally on the code level of educational version, we don't know what it was meant to do other than the fact it's likely to be used in conjunction with the contraption cube. And yes, the contraption cube works on normal buttons too if you're about to suggest it doesn't. The educational version also adds one new item to the puzzle maker. This is the text bubble, also known as the text node. This is not exactly an in-universe test element, more that it is a way to leave notes in the level. You can write text in it and then play the text in game like you'll play a commentary node. The text appears in a similar fashion to how subtitles are formatted on your screen, and I have a maximum of 6 lines total before the text bubble will just outright refuse to display anything further. One main difference between commentary nodes and text bubbles is that you have to be in the vicinity of the text bubble to activate it, while commentary nodes can be active from basically anywhere so long as you're looking at it. Before we move on to further in-game changes, I'd like to mention an interesting peculiarity of area of faith plates in the educational version of Puzzle Maker. Valve added an option for you to use impulses, so rather than simply placing a target of a faith plate to shoot you towards, you can adjust the force and angle that the faith plate will launch objects at. This is measured in newtons and degrees respectively. No target spot is made in level 1 compiled, presumably this is due to the fact that this specific new feature of faith plates was made to be used in physics classes. Now that we're in game, the educational version adds two new mechanics to be used in the learning environment they're going to be looking at. By enabling education mode in the options, we gain access to a stopwatch and a physics speed manipulator. By pressing J, we start the stopwatch timer. K stops the timer, L resets it, and 6 toggles it between on and off. If you've ever done any form of physics related experiments in school, you know that timing is very important and you almost certainly use a stopwatch to time objects. Portal 2's educational version does this exact thing with its own stopwatch, and it's actually rather fascinating. Hopping back to the puzzle maker real quick, all buttons actually feature a toggle stopwatch option that will run the stopwatch for as long as they're pressed down. You can really tell the level of thought that went into developing the educational version with neat quirks like that. Anyways, back in game. The final thing that Portal 2 educational version brings to the table is the aforementioned physics speed in the blader. This is essentially a more user friendly version of the fizz timescale command. It changes how fast physics in the world reacts and doesn't affect the player. Pressing 1 sets to 100% speed, 2 sets to 0%, 3 sets to 50%, 4 to 10%, and 5 sets to 1%. You can use this to basically ensure objects will drop at the same time once the platform they may be resting on is removed. I had a lot of fun playing around with this thing, watching cubes in humanly impossible ways, setting the physics speed to zero to stop time in, and sending cubes through infinite loop of flings to build up speed. You could probably make a cool mod concept out of this if anyone bothered to recreate the BUI in base game Portal 2, honestly. I even made a quick puzzle with the idea of being able to pause physics. Let me show it off. Pretty neat, isn't it? I think we're just about getting close to wrapping up this video, but before we fully end it, Educational Version has one final surprise for us. By holding down R, we get a proper peek of Portal 2's unused feedback ping menu. This was planned for the puzzle maker with the idea of a playtest system that was originally going to be used for puzzle creators to get playtest feedback on their puzzles through a whole system that was canned, but that's a story for another video. This feedback pin menu essentially acts the same way as a ping tool. You can highlight objects, choose specific pin responses, the whole works. 
why the hell this is re-enabled in the educational version is anyone's guess really. There is certainly more I could have talked about. The educational version seems to have its own heap of unused, scrapped, and lost content, but that's something I'm still digging into. Plus, I don't plan on overcomplicating this video with its facts just yet. This is a video mainly about getting people informed about what Portal 2's educational version was like. It's certainly cathartic for me personally. I remember trying to campaign for my school to use the Teach with Portals program when I was younger, because I thought the possibility of using Portal 2 in school and for learning was just so cool. So actually playing this version of the game after so long is so goddamn fulfilling to me personally. That's all I have for today folks, be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and support me on Patreon if you want to learn some more obscure portal content with me, because trust me, I still haven't scratched the surface. Anyways, stay safe y'all, peace.